Done right, a good cameo can leave a lasting impression. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today, we're counting down our picks for the top 20 epic movie cameos. I'm Bob Barker. Wow, what an honor. Nice to meet you. Looks like you and I are going to be playing together today. <laughs> That's funny. Who am I really playing with? This is a pro-am, Happy. Each golfer is playing with a celebrity. Wow. You know, Nick Faldo and I won this thing last year, and I'd like to win it again this year. For this list, we're taking a look at more big-name celebrities who made a mark with brief and unexpected appearances in movies. We've excluded actors who were arguably more along the lines of supporting players, such as Will Ferrell in Wedding Crashers or Tom Cruise in Tropic Thunder. Since some of these cameos tie into big plot twists, a spoiler alert is in order. Number 20. Hugh Jackman, X-Men First Class Excuse me, I'm Eric Lynch. Charles Xavier. An X-Men movie apparently cannot be produced without an appearance from Wolverine, no matter how short it may be. Since the launch of the first movie, Hugh Jackman has made nine physical appearances as Logan, ten if you count Deadpool. And this one. In case the other fell off. While X-Men Apocalypse went for an extended and violent action sequence, Wolverine's best cameo lasted less than half a minute and featured no claws whatsoever. During X-Men First Class, Xavier and Magneto are looking for able mutants to join their cause, which leads them to a dingy bar in the middle of nowhere. Sadly, it was a wasted journey. Number 19. Ozzy Osbourne, Little Nicky what? What's that? What's with the ball? <laughs> Deus Ex Machina, Black Sabbath style. As the son of Satan, the kind and sweet little Nicky is a bitter disappointment. Sandler's demon is on a quest to prevent his brothers from plunging the world into a never-ending darkness, although he does need a bit of help to get the job done. After smashing a mysterious orb given to him by his angelic mother, the Prince of Darkness shows up to take a bite out of Nicky's brother. Metal fans have known this for decades, but Ozzy is a gift from God. You can do it, Ozzy! Bite his freaking head off! No! Number 18. Danny McBride. Observe and report. Get your hands off him! What? You heard me? That's my son! Considering they created comedy gold with Eastbound and Down, it's no surprise that Danny McBride appeared in Jody Hill's Observe and Report. Seth Rogen's Ronnie is an arrogant mall cop driven by a desire for justice, who apprehends a prepubescent drug peddler during his free time. Unfortunately, the child's father shows up with his goons and sticks a gun in Ronnie's face area. Luckily for the mall cop, this gang has a few screws loose. Sticking to what he's known for, McBride delivers a funny and foul-mouthed performance. Number 17. Everyone, Muppets Most Wanted. Oh, waiter. Yes? May I help you? Uh, uh, the, uh, the wine, please? From the days of Steve Martin and Richard Pryor, the Muppets have turned celebrity cameos into an art form. Their 2014 outing boasts over 20 famous faces, ensuring that every single viewer will recognize at least one of them. We're doing a sequel. Let's give it a go. With Hollywood stars. And more one line of cameo. We're doing a sequel. Picking the best of the bunch is practically impossible, as nearly all of them deliver the goods. Who didn't laugh when Christoph Waltz showed up to literally do the waltz, or Tom Hiddleston hamming it up as the great escapo for the Prisoner talent show? Honestly, the entire movie is one big cameo. Number 16. Christopher Lloyd – A Million Ways to Die in the West Hello? This film showed, if not anything else, that Seth MacFarlane knows how to write cameos. Despite being the director's worst-reviewed movie to date, A Million Ways to Die in the West features a few hilarious moments, including an out-of-the-blue cameo by Doc Brown himself. MacFarlane's Albert Stark randomly discovers Christopher Lloyd in a barn as the scientist tries to kickstart the DeLorean. What, uh, what's that? Nothing. I mean, it's a weather experiment. Oh. Great Scott! Considering Back to the Future Part 3 takes place in the West, this cameo actually kind of makes sense. Number 15. Johnny Depp, 21 Jump Street. Let's, let's just relax and we can all leave here as friends. Yeah, let's do that. This film wasn't just funny, it also ingeniously brought the franchise full circle. Oh my god, we're gonna oh. die. As Schmidt and Jenko find themselves cornered by bad guys, 
two other undercover cops reveal themselves. One of the cops is played by Peter DeLuise, who you might know, and the other is played by Johnny Depp, who you definitely know. Little dweebs just ruined a five-year investigation. Reprising their roles from the original TV series, the partners reminisce about their Jump Street days before getting shot. Depp himself requested that his character be killed off, and the filmmakers gave him a truly uproarious send-off. That was a gun. Somebody definitely got shot. Number 14, Hulk Hogan, Gremlins 2, The New Batch. We have gremlins in the attraction booth. Could you help? Gremlins 2 works in so much meta humor that it practically destroys the fourth wall. This is worse than the first one. We just show these movies, madam. We don't make them. At one point, the mischievous gremlins actually take over the projection booth, stalling the film. But don't worry, folks, Hulk Hogan is in the audience. In true macho fashion, the professional wrestler threatens to get physical if the little miscreants above don't resume playing Gremlins 2. Okay, you guys, listen up. People pay good money to see this movie. When they go out to a theater, they want cold sodas, hot popcorn, and no monsters in the projection booth. It turns out the Gremlins actually have two weaknesses, sunlight and the Hulkster. Hilarious and surreal, this scene makes us wish every movie theater had Hulk Hogan on standby. Sorry, folks. It won't happen again. Number 13. Robert Patrick, Wayne's World. We just missed him. He was here like 15 minutes ago. I think he said he was going to the Galleria, right? Yeah. The Galleria? Terminator 2 Judgment Day took the world by storm in 1991, prompting Robert Patrick to revive the character for a brief cameo in Mike Myers' Wayne's World. Dressed up in his now iconic beat cop uniform, the T-1000 pulls over Wayne to ask whether he recently saw John Connor running around. Yes, officers, there's something wrong. Have you seen this boy? Ah! Ah! Myers reacts exactly how anyone would in this situation. He screams and hightails it out of there. By the way, the T-1000 was actually meant to be portrayed by Billy Idol before he was ruled out due to an unfortunate motorcycle accident. Number 12, Michael Jackson, Men in Black 2. How to go? Zed, the door locks are gone and the treaty is signed. Good work. During the later years of his life, Michael Jackson was the target of numerous gags, with everyone making fun of his physical appearance and questionable behavior. If this cameo from Men in Black 2 proved anything, however, it's that Jackson could laugh at himself. Zed, what about that position you promised me in Men in Black? Conversing via video phone, Jackson is revealed to be an ally of Zed and possibly an alien. Still working on the Alien Affirmative Action Program. I'll keep you posted. Wait a minute, that's not what you promised me. You're you're breaking up. Zed? Can't hear you. Hello? I'll call you back. Jackson wants nothing more than to be an official MIB agent, although Zed isn't too keen on the idea. Michael sadly never becomes Agent M, but he'll always be the king of pop. Zed, hello? Number 11, Emma Watson. This is the end. Emma! Emma. Oh my god, you guys are alive! This is the end is yet another comedy that packs in countless cameos. Although it was pretty awesome to see the Backstreet Boys reunited, it was even more jarring seeing Hermione Granger make an appearance. I hid in a drain pipe for days, like three or four, I don't even know how many. And then I stopped hearing people and I started hearing growling noises. Out there. Surviving the apocalypse, Emma Watson finds refuge at James Franco's house. But as the guys start sending the wrong kind of vibes, Watson decides that she's probably safer outside. <laughs> You have to drink, put it in the bag! There are six of us, you cannot rob us! Before leaving though, the Hogwarts alumnus bashes in Seth Rogen's face and steals their supplies. Whether she's wielding a wand or an axe, Watson is one celebrity we'd want on our side when all hell breaks loose. Get the Milky Way away! You can put the axe down, Emma! Yeah. Okay. No! Yeah. Shoot her face! Shoot her! Number 10, Eminem and Ray Romano. Funny people. I don't think you should have took that medicine. Why not? I don't know, personally, I think you should have just let yourself die. Funny People centers on Adam Sandler as a struggling comedian who suddenly contracts a fatal disease and has to revalue his entire life. As with most of Judd Apatow's work, Funny People blends hilarious hijinks with many heartfelt moments, including the awesome scene featuring Eminem and Ray Romano. After the rapper gives Sandler a pep talk about the celebrity lifestyle, Eminem loses it after realizing that the Everybody Loves Raymond comedian is staring at him. Apparently, everybody does not include Eminem. Ray Romano's bothering you? Who? Ray, Ray, who? Ray Romano, the guy from Everybody Loves Raymond? 
I'm gonna f what show he's on. I'll, I'll f this mother f up, man. Hey. Hey, man. hey, Ray! Hello, Marshall. F***ing problem here, buddy? I thought everybody loved you. Number 9. Mike Tyson, The Hangover When a wild night becomes a day of retracing drunken steps, one nagging mystery in particular remains a head-scratcher. Where'd the tiger come from? Reality is stranger than any theory you can dream up, because the boys stole it from a sleeping Mike Tyson. Gotta say, though, Mike seems pretty friendly, especially when he wants to sing with the gang. But turns out it's all part of his interrogation technique. Oh, Number 8. Martin Sheen – Hot Shots Part Deux We get up at, at five. At first I thought they'd handed me the wrong dossier. I couldn't believe they wanted this man dead. Third generation West Point, top of his class, Korea, airborne, about a thousand decorations. The Hot Shots sequel parodies many serious war movies, so obviously they had to include a reference to Francis Ford Coppola's 1979 epic. A badass retired Navy soldier who found inner peace after discovering Buddhism, Charlie Sheen's topper Harley is pulled back in for one final mission. While ramboing his way through Iraq, he comes across Martin Sheen's character from Apocalypse Now, who might have taken a wrong turn on his way to Vietnam. As the father and son cross paths, they share a few words of encouragement. I love you in Wall Street! Number 7. Neil Patrick Harris, Harold and Kumar Go to White Castle This legendary cameo comes from an actor who first got famous for his role as TV's kid doctor Doogie. In a slightly less than wholesome role, however, NPH turns up during the titular duo's journey to this burger haven. Uh, Neil, you don't understand. We've been craving these burgers all night. Yeah, I've been craving burgers too. Fur burgers? Come on, dudes, let's pick up some trim at a strip club. The Doogie line always works on strippers. Lap dance. The complete opposite of what anyone expected, this washed up and creepy celeb turned hitchhiker punctuates the title stoner's quest for burgers in ways they couldn't possibly imagine. What happened to my car? I made some love stains in the back seat. Number 6. Eminem, The Interview I feel like when I rap, like, people twist my words. Marshall Mathers, also known as Eminem, has made multiple epic cameos in Seth Rogen comedies. We've seen that he's not a very big fan of Ray Romano. Then, in the interview, Eminem revealed that he's been playing gay peekaboo. When I say things about gay people, or people think that my lyrics are homophobic, mm -hmm. you know, it's because I'm gay. Um, when I rap about violence. Wait. In the past, Eminem has faced some controversy for his allegedly homophobic lyrics. It's nothing short of hysterical watching the hardcore rapper maintain a straight face as he pokes fun at himself. M, let's just back it up a moment. You just said that you were gay? Um, and I'm just curious what you meant by that exactly. I mean, I'm gay. Uh, I'm just a little confused here because gay can mean a lot of things. I am a homosexual. Just as funny as everyone's shocked reactions as they try to fathom the bombshell Eminem just casually dropped. Number 5. Michael Sarah, This Is The End I'm sorry. I, I sorry. Who wants to sip? Sip time. This is the end asks how celebrities would react to an end of days scenario. While the main actors mostly play it straight, Sarah is allowed to run wild for his brief cameo. The arrested development actor drops his typically goody two shoes persona as he indulges in some party favors, engages in a threesome, and harasses Rihanna. <laughs> also, this is the end shows Channing Tatum in a gimp suit. You have to see it to believe it. Number 4. David Bowie, Zoolander. All right, who's going to call this sucker? If nobody has any objections, I believe I might be of service. Zoolander has celebrity cameos left and right, with the most memorable of the bunch being the late great David Bowie. Making a triumphant entrance complete with a title card, Bowie declares himself the judge of Derek and Hansel's walk off. Now, this will be a straight walk off. Old school rules. First model walks, second model duplicates, then elaborates. Okay, boys. Let's go to work. As Bowie keeps score on his hand, Hansel takes the lead by miraculously removing his underwear while somehow keeping his pants on. Even Jareth the Goblin King couldn't perform such dark magic. Derek tries to top his rival, but he isn't quite as successful. Thus, Bowie disqualifies him like a boss. Disqualified. Number 3. Bill Murray, Zombieland. Bill Murray, you're a zombie? In a flick about the end of mankind, 
The last person anyone expects to see is zombified Bill Murray. But fear not, he's just playing dress up to keep up with the Joneses. Once Murray drops the ruse, Woody Harrelson gives the appropriate, and some would say mandatory, fan level freakout. Too bad Bill takes his pranks too far, trying to get a laugh from a scared kid with a shotgun. Number 2. Luke Wilson, Tim Robbins, and Ben Stiller. Anchorman, The Legend of Ron Burgundy. In a completely random and hilarious opportunity for cameos, the Channel 4 news team is caught off guard by all of their rivals while taking a shortcut through town. No, we don't just mean Vince Vaughn and his aggressive evening news team. We're talking about Luke Wilson's Channel 2 team, Tim Robbins' public news team, and Ben Stiller's Spanish language news team, and their epic, and frankly bizarre, cameo-laden brawl. Of course, the stakes were raised in the Anchorman sequel when Sasha Baron Cohen, Tina Fey, Jim Carrey, John C. Riley, and a bunch of others showed up to duke it out for journalistic dominance. Jeff Bullington, ESPN All Sports. Tonight's play of the day is me, extracting your spine from your dead body. Before we unveil our most epic number one pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Billy Idol, The Wedding Singer. Uh, how you doing, sir? Chicken or fish? You better get out of my way, Billy. You're gonna get hurt. Oh, yeah. Don't you talk to Billy Idol that way. David Hasselhoff, The SpongeBob SquarePants Movie. Who are you? I'm David Hasselhoff. Hooray! <laughs> Go, Hasselhoff! Next stop, Bikini Bottom! Tom Cruise and Company, Austin Powers in Goldmember. <laughs> Kate Blanchett, Hot Fuzz. What's the situation? We know the situation. We've been over this. No, I, I meant here. Matt Damon, Euro Trip. This one's for you, baby. Happy anniversary. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Stan Lee, Marvel Cinematic Universe This influential legend captured the imaginations of comic book readers everywhere for decades, and he had a habit of popping up on the big screen as well. You know, I guess one person can make a difference. His cameos were in fact so numerous that he has his own Watch Mojo list devoted to the topic. I, I had a girl probably the same as yours. She always complained that I spent too much time with my own comics. He's showed up as a tuned-out librarian, a romance expert, and as replacements for Hugh Hefner and Larry King, to name a few. Unsurprisingly, most of his screen time was in MCU movies, but blink and you might miss some of them. After all these cameo appearances, you'd think Stan wouldn't have had any trouble getting on the guest list. Uh, invitation, sir. Um, I should be on that list. Name? Stan Lee. Yeah, uh, nice try, buddy. Nice no, no, try. really, nice I'm try. Stan Lee. Yeah. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.